Joining me now to explain more about this medical mystery, Dr. Perry Wilson. So first off, doctor, thanks for joining us. What did you learn, you know, when this information first came out? Did, did, you, did it alert you in some kind of way? Did you feel some kind of way about it? And what are you telling your patients? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, so I, I get these health uh, uh, alert network uh, uh, alerts like like several other physicians. And, and typically, there you know, there's an outbreak of salmonella, foodborne illness, something like that. Hepatitis in kids catches your eye. And, and then the thing that was particularly interesting is that all nine of these kids in Alabama uh, had adenovirus, which is a common virus, something that virtually every adult has been infected with by the time they reach adulthood that typically causes the common cold or a stomach bug. And that makes this really different and interesting and surprising. So what should parents be looking for as far as symptoms or red flags here? Because anytime you hear some news like this, you know, it's natural for a parent to be alarmed. Yeah, of, of course, but I, I don't want parents to become alarmed by this. There are these cases reported in the U.S. There are substantially more cases, uh, over 100 now reported in the U.K., but that's still a vanishingly small number. This is incredibly rare. And here's the thing. These, the, these kids are fairly sick. This is pretty severe illness. And so you're not going to miss it. Um, if, if this is happening to your child, you'll know they'll be very sick and you'll be seeking medical attention. So the really important thing here is that doctors are aware that this is happening so that they can do some appropriate testing um, and potentially even try some early treatments for these kids. What are some of those treatment options? Well, it would help if we knew exactly what the causative agent here was. Now, I mentioned adenovirus, which doesn't typically cause hepatitis in kids unless they have an organ transplant or some other form of immunosuppression. But that is one hypothesis. There's no FDA-approved treatment for adenovirus, but there are several antivirals that have been used in prior studies of those immunosuppressed kids. Um, and, and so that might be uh, something a doctor might consider uh, if a child presents to them with acute hepatitis and adenovirus infection, but still, it's still early to know exactly what the best course here is going to be. What about, you know, kids that have masked up and they've been isolated during COVID? Do you feel like that comes into play here with this particular illness or even other illnesses? Are they more susceptible? Yeah, I mean, we have to think about COVID, right? We're in the midst of a pandemic. Why is this happening now? Is it just a terrible coincidence? And I want to point out that in all the 108 kids that have been identified in the UK, none of them were vaccinated. There's no sign this has anything to do with vac vaccination. However, a large percentage did have prior COVID infection. Of course, lots of us have had prior COVID infection at this point. So it's very hard to tease out whether COVID itself is playing a role. D does the social distancing play a role? Are our immune systems not as revved up as they used to be? Some suggestion of that from other diseases, the RSV infections this year were a bit worse than we'd seen in the past. But for adenovirus to turn from, you know, a stomach bug to acute hepatitis is a big, big leap. I think something else is going on. All right, Dr. Perry Wilson, thank you so much for your expertise.